Dear Muslim brothers and sisters and respected guests from the non-Muslims, if there are one or many, our task this evening is to uncover the most profound fact which a great deal of human beings, their governments, their intellectuals, has spent a great deal of time and energy to cover. And that is the life of a man and his mission. A man whose name was Muhammad, the son of Abdullah. May the peace and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon him. And may he be immune from the claiming of any faults or distortions regarding his person. It is not our attempt in discussing this issue to merely convince the world of the accomplishments of a person. For if we only had to discuss his accomplishments, then we would be comparing him with other human beings and their accomplishments. And even though his accomplishments far exceed whomsoever we might compare him to, it is the man and his message that is the most profound and that is the most important because it is the man and his message, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that contributed to his greatness and resulted in those accomplishments. Now when we discuss the greatness of an individual, we need not simply measure the extent of his influence But we need to discuss and understand and quantify the actual qualities that contribute to that realm of influence. A simple examination of Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, that uneducated shepherd, That prophet and messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That husband, that father, that friend, that statesman, that warrior, that merchant, that simple person that neighbor
That individual who received without any ambition of his own revelation from the Most High and carried that revelation and that responsibility when such a revelation could never have been received if it had come down upon a mountain. And the Quran, a revelation, an inspiration, and a legislation from the Most High has made that statement. It said, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ لَوْ أَنزَلْنَا هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ عَلَى جَبَلْ لَرَأَيْتَهُ خَاشِئًا مُتَسَدِّعًا مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ وَتِلْكَ الْأَمْثَالُ نَذْرِبُهَا لِلنَّاسِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ The translation of which we can generally give had this Quran descended upon a mountain you would have seen this mountain crumbling falling apart from the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And such are the similitudes that we strike for you in order that you may give reflection to it. This tamthil, this example, which the Quran gives is telling us that the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was so powerful as it came down that like a laser beam which is used to make holes into mountains and like the sonar beam which is used to destroy mountains when this revelation came down it had such power and more but the most high prepared the heart of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so it was able to receive it the only such heart that we could imagine could receive such power That man and his message is unparalleled and categorically more profound than any other human being in the entire documented history of the human race. It is truly tragic that many human beings have been deprived of that legacy. Our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is both a gift and a mercy to mankind. He was sent solely for the purpose of perfecting good morals. He said Verily, I have been sent to perfect good manners. His morals, his character, was a personification of the Quran itself. And this is how the Quran has been preserved not just by the memorization but by the personification of it 
so that this Quran, unlike any other revelation, it has been memorized in the life of Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, and it has been personified and documented by the billions of human beings who have followed him since. The message of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the detailed record and evidence for all human beings to see. We would ask the question, how is it if this is a fact, how is it that this life of the Prophet وسلم, have been held back, has been covered, has been hidden, and is not evident to the entire world? There are many reasons. On the part of the unbelievers, their intellectuals, their religious leaders, their skeptics, their conspirators, those who have hated and opposed the monotheistic message ever since Ibrahim alayhi salam. They have done everything and spent everything to kill to maim, to distort, to cover, to eliminate, to confuse this message. And they have been consistent in doing so. But on the part of the Muslims, we also have done our share in covering this great treasure. We Muslims acquiesced to foreign colonization. We accepted the domination and the colonization of the non-Muslims. We accepted the following of puppet governments and tyrants given to us, handpicked for us, for the last 500 years. We Muslims contributed with complicity, blatantly, in the open, we conspired with the unbelievers to destroy the Khilafah. And our leaders signed the Charter of the United Nations, or at that time the League of Nations. Our leaders, they signed, and they are loyal to it today. They will never bring the Khilafah back. We Muslims, we have failed. <laughs> 